Um, your thoughts just uh, kind of on, not really a practice today, more like kind of an early shoot around, but uh, um, just maybe your thoughts on coming off of yesterday's game and then kind of thoughts going into, into tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. Um, kind of having to play this like a series, um, you know, today was prep and adjusting to some things that we saw last night, um, some things that we can take advantage on, some things that we need to clean up and focus on. Um, you know, again, I'll kind of reiterate that Dallas is a very good team and their record is an ind indicative of what type of team it team they are, um, adding Satu back and Alicia Gray back. Um, and I'm not sure of Thornton's status, but, you know, everyone on the court is a threat at, a, at, a, at any given time. And just kind to, you know, game plan for that, um, but also making sure we work on ourselves and understand what, where our advantages are. Great. Thanks, Coach. Um... Percy, you are the questioning person on the call today. So uh, go ahead and start us out here. Awesome. Hey, Coach, I don't have a whole lot for you today, but I'm just wondering, um, have you seen uh, the shot yet? And just how many times have you seen it? <laughs> yes, um, you know, watching film and just rewinding to look at uh, everything that kind of developed within that. but. Um, also watching it with a big heart for Jewel. I think that's something that, um, you know, I'll talk about she has that clutch gene, but I think she was due for a moment like that because she just works so hard. And yeah, I've, I've watched it a lot. I can't even tell you how many times. <laughs> hey, I've had a chance to, to watch it a few times here and uh, it looks like on that play, you, you guys had like three people that were open. I mean, that, so, and, I know that last night you didn't really want to sort of give the goods on the play, but I'm sure every coach has seen film now. But so the play is called what, or it's supposed to do what, and 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 can you ever use that play a, a again? Yeah, I'm not sure um, because you know she hit the shot. If I can see it anytime soon, you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, if you if you watch it, you see a couple things unfold. Um, you know, you have a guard to guard um, screen and just kind of checking to see what they did. And there was miscommunication on their part, and that made them then late for the next action, which um, involved our post and Jewel. And then you know, as you as as you watch Dallas play the entire game, they switched with Stewie. And a lot of times in late game situations, that's the scheme for a lot of teams and what you really game plan for is um, switching scenarios within that. And so, like you said, like Sue was open initially um, because they there was miscommunication on that guard to guard defensively. Jewel was open and Stewie was open. If we needed one more second, you know, Sadie's might've been open as well. So, um, you know, just trying to adjust to what we see on the floor and, um, you know, provide provide something for our, our ladies in late game. Uh, after the game, Coach Johnson reflected on the disparity and the free throws. And I'm sure that that's going to come up in the game on Sunday. Just how were you guys able to be, I guess, more aggressive that way? Because that's not always your MO. Right. You know, um, Dallas is top in the league in uh, free throw rate. We knew that coming in. I think they take about 22 free throws a game. Um, you know, Enrique takes a bulk of those. But at the same token, they foul a lot. And so if you look at that as a team, um, we, you know, our one of our keys was to defend without fouling um, and also to be aggressive in attack, whether it's attacking, you know, their schemes of switching, um, attacking with our big guard, um, or just attacking in transition. That's a, another key area that, Dallas isn't a very top end. So if you just look at our um, our strategy of just being aggressive, um, sometimes you need to attack aggression with aggressiveness. So attack aggressiveness with aggression, you know? And so, you know, Dallas is a very aggressive team, but at the same token, we can't foul them, can't get, give them easy buckets. And obviously 
you know, since that's been put in the air, that's something that we have to just concentrate on even more tomorrow is just um, being in place, staying in place. They are tough shot makers and takers. So um, as long as we're contesting, we'll live with the tough ones and just finish off plays with rebounds. And uh, in this past game, you, you went with a 10 player rotation there. Um, mm -hmm. Is that something that you like? Is that comfortable for you? Or was that just what this game presented? I think so. Um, you know, I honestly feel like every game is going to present something different for us, um, matchup wise, um, rotation wise. We have a good problem in that we have some depth in places that we've not yet ha ha haven't had in previous seasons. Um, and so it's just a matter of, again, um, figuring out where we're successful, figuring out, um, you know, you see Jordan and Sue were on the floor at a time because Jordan is able to guard Enrique and uh, as is Jewel. So, you know, it's just mixing that in, but I believe Percy game to game, um, that, that changes in, um, it's about, I know players need consistency in their roles, um, but you know, whatever game, whatever the game presents itself, I think in order to win games, it's essential that we have um, players on the floor, um, that can provide that for us, whatever we need at that moment, whether it's offense or defense. Awesome, Coach. That's all I got. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate you joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. We'll bring in Mercedes uh, Russell, who is joining us today um, just with audio. So we will uh, go ahead and kick it off. Percy, do you have any questions for Mercedes? If not, I have a few others that I've got that I can pass along. All right, Mercedes, I'm going to give you some that I've been given. Um, first off, just say your comfort level getting back into the rotation. Do you feel like you're back into uh, the, the normal feel of the team and that everything seems to be chugging right along? Or do you still feel like you're a little ways away from, from that still? No, I think I'm uh, getting used to the team. Obviously, we have some new faces. So we've been all kind of just taking some time to get to know one another and things like that. But I think I'm fitting very well. Um, clearly, we haven't had much time to practice because obviously me and Piff were late and then having Lou gone and her coming back. So, I mean, now we'll actually have time. And then this road trip is going to be huge for us. Obviously, a lot of games, but uh, we're still getting used to each other. You can tell, but obviously it's going to take a little time. Gotcha. And then just your thoughts on Dallas uh, style of play overall. Is it, is it, is it tough as a post player to battle down low when they're running and gunning so much, or do you find that that's a style you play well in? Uh, I honestly think it's just adjusting. Obviously every single team is going to be different. And this year, Dallas, uh, they play at a, at a quick tempo. They score a lot in transition. Um, so it just comes down to adjusting every single game. Obviously, we're going to have a different scout, but uh, it's nothing that we haven't seen before. And then your your thoughts just on the the game winner by Jewel. I mean, you uh, you've seen her do that in practice. She seems to throw shots up like that in practice and hit them on a fairly <laughs> routine basis as well. But I mean, does it ever get tired to watch somebody like Jewel hit a shot like that at the end of the game? No, it's it's honestly so fun. And I mean, she's built for shots like that, for big shots, game winning shots. It was huge and it was so fun just to watch and see her celebrate um, and obviously get us a win, which was very important. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, uh, super happy for her. And then what, were, what was going through your mind? Did you get a clean look at, a, at the, her shot or were you, you were still setting a screen down there? Um, yeah, you... honestly, when she let it go, I was just watching it and watching and I was like, oh, I was like, that looks like it's going in. <laughs> and then it went in and I was going crazy. But as you can see, I was running towards her. So excited. Cool. Well, thanks, Mercedes, so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Um, good luck tomorrow. We'll uh, Thank you. maybe see you again tomorrow after post game. Thank you. And we'll bring in uh, Jordan Canada here in just a moment. All right. 
And we have Jordan Canada here joining us to go through getting all set up. There we go. We're all set for you, Jordan. And just a couple questions just that I've been given to go through with you. Um, and then we'll let you go for the afternoon. Um, first off, just kind of want to start out with a more broad question on as a, as a UCLA grad, what's it like having Noel, a fellow UCLA grad, as your, as your coach? Is it, it kind of an added special touch there, or is it just, just another coach kind of a thing? <laughs> uh, definitely a special touch. You know, anytime a Bruin is, you know, in a position of, of I don't want to say power, but you know what I mean. Um, it's always a great thing. And, you know, Noe has been by my side since I've been on the team as a rookie and her just coaching me through when she was a player my first year and just all the years prior like she's just been my go-to person for any and everything basketball um I can always talk to her and and whatever I'm feeling I can always go to her and she's just real honest with me and um and now being her being a head coach I mean nothing has changed she still talks to me she still tries to coach me and, and give me advice so it's just awesome to have her um you know, see her in this light and, and to see what she, you know, get what she deserves. So it's just a, a great thing for her. And I'm, I'm extremely happy for her, but I'm also happy that, you know, she gets to coach me still. And just uh, take us back to that, your first year in the league, um, you know, playing alongside of her, but she even says that it was like a player coach type of a year for her. Um, what, what was that like for you having somebody like that, that you, you knew well, that, you know, a fellow alumni and just kind of bringing you into the league. Yeah, it made me feel comfortable. It made me feel safe. It made me feel like, you know, I can always depend on Noe whenever I needed her. Um, you know, and she's talked me through a lot of stuff, especially in the playoffs when, you know, Sue went down and, you know, she she stepped up and she she talked to me, you know, and told me things that she saw or things that I can do to improve. So, you know, my rookie year was um it was definitely a growth year for me, but she played a tremendous part in it. Just, you know, making sure that she's talking to me constantly, whether I'm on the bench or in the game. Um, so just to have her here, like I said, it's, you know, it's an amazing feeling. It's a blessing. And, um, you know, I'm just happy to, to be, I'm just happy that she's been a part of my transition and my growth. Mm -hmm. Uh, take us through playing against Dallas. Uh, it, it's a different style than than uh, you have seen all year. Um, what what are their what are the things that are hard about Dallas to to beat, and what do you feel like the team does well to kind of counter that? Yeah, I mean they are top in the league in transition. I mean they are really hard to stop in transition. I think you guys saw that last night. Just I think they had. Um, 19 points fast break points I'm not quite sure but just the just how quick they are and how physical they are um, it's definitely different than what we have seen thus far and you know they're a young team too they like to run so and we like to run too so it's just you know it's a pace it's one of those pace games it's just back and forth and you know we you know, the team that we have, you know, we're a, a, a little bit more experienced. So we know that at the end of the day, it, it tough games like that, when it goes into overtime, it's all about execution and, and defense. And I think that's something that, you know, we've proven time and time again, that, you know, when we continue to just, you know, follow the schemes and do the things that we need to do, eventually at some point it's going to hit them. And, you know, that's when we go on our run and that's when, you know, we execute our game plan um, offensively and defensively. But they're just really physical and, you know, they're really fast and their transition game is, you know, one of the best in the league. And so I think that's what's hard for us is try to maintain and make sure we always have bodies and not all necessarily thinking, rebound all the time it's just focus on getting back uh, on defense and stopping the ball as quick as we can um how do you along those same lines how do you stop a player like Arike she you know came out and uh, hot in the first half but then um only had seven points in the second half in overtime what was what was the key and what role in that did you play when you were out there as well well I don't want to get my secrets away <laughs> Um, maybe, maybe not till after Sunday then. Well, <laughs> yeah, but you know, I I've known Enrique for quite some time. You know, we played USA basketball together. I don't think we ever played against each other in college, but 
Um, but just from watching her, I, I know that I have to do my work early with her. I know that I have to, you know, be a little bit more aggressive, not letting her catch it where she wants to catch it, not uh, letting her be comfortable because once she gets comfortable, it's really hard to stop her. So I know I just have to do my work early and be a little bit more aggressive with her. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then just take us through that, that last shot uh, by Jewel. Um, I know we saw it last year with her beating the sparks in, in a similar buzzer beating fashion that was from the corner instead of from the from like 35 or whatever feet out, it seemed like it was. Um, what, what was going through your mind when you saw that play develop and as that ball kind of hung up in the air forever? You know, Jewel has ice in her veins. It's in her blood. She has that mamba mentality. And when she threw it up, I knew it was going in just because of the trajectory of the ball. And just, it just, I just knew it was going in. And, you know, Jewel has proven time and time again, like, like you said, last year in the bubble that she's made for these moments. Um, and it wasn't even just that she's, she not even just that moment in last year, just in general, just her being able to knock down shots in key moments of the game. Um, she's just made, she just made for those moments and to see, um, her have another buzzer beater, it just speaks to the player that she is and the mama mentality that she has. And to witness that is, and to be her teammate in that, um, it's just great, but I knew it was going in the moment that she threw it up just because of the trajectory of the ball. Cool. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Jordan. We appreciate it. We'll see you out there tomorrow. Thank you.